Hey everyone, I'm going to walk you through the features of my Blender add-on, Source Engine Collision Tools. I created this add-on primarily for my own use, but I published it on GitHub 100% open source in case anyone else might also get some benefit from it. What this add-on does is it dramatically speeds up the process of creating collision models in Source Engine games, like TF2, Gmod, and so on. It also has some really useful tools for optimizing collision models as well. Now, where this add-on really shines is for making ported maps. I'm sure many of you who play TF2 have at least once played through a map like, you know, Clock Town from Majora's Mask or Delfino Plaza from Super Mario Sunshine and so on. Well, this add-on makes collision making for those kinds of maps really, really fast. And on top of that, it also has some tools for making sure that your collision doesn't make the map super laggy. I'll go into what I mean by that. So starting off, you'll find the add-ons UI in the Object Properties panel on the right side of Blender. By default, the panel will be disabled if you don't have any mesh object currently selected in the 3D viewport. So make sure you select one first. Probably the most important feature is, of course, the actual collision generator. It's the Generate Collision Mesh button near the top here. You'll notice that there are some settings above this. The first setting is the decimate ratio. The decimate ratio allows you to generate a lower poly, less complex collision model. It basically does what the decimate modifier does in Blender, but it does it automatically for you as part of the collision generation process. It's totally optional, and if you don't want to use decimation, you can just leave the setting at one. Effectively, one means that you're just telling the add-on to not run decimation at all. The second setting is the extrude factor. You can tweak this setting in case the generated collision holes end up being too thick or too thin. Now, I did add a button at the top, as you can see here, the recommended settings button. And this button tries to guess the correct extrude factor for you based on the currently selected model in the scene. Over 90% of the time, you can just use the recommended settings button and you won't have to worry about setting the extrude factor manually. But in some cases, I did run into a few edge cases where I had to set it manually. So I left the option there for you, just in case. So let's go ahead and try generating a collision model. It's gonna take a bit, and while it does its thing, I'm gonna say a few things. So the collision generator itself is really fast, but on really complex scenes like this one, it may lag a little bit. Usually though, it still does the job within less than a minute. On Nintendo 64 maps, it's basically instant because those games were so low poly that the add-on is basically able to do it right away. See, that wasn't too bad. And as you'll notice, once it's done, it pops up a little message window telling you how many holes ended up being generated, just for your reference. In this case, you know, we got quite a few, and this is definitely not, uh, <laughs> it's not usable as is in Source Engine. It's way too many holes in one model. So thankfully, that brings me to the next feature in the add-on, and that's the split up collision mesh button that you can see here. Now, what the split up collision mesh button does is that it splits up one single collision model into lots of different parts. And as you might already know, if you're a Source Engine mapper, Source Engine has a limitation on collision meshes where you're not supposed to have more than 32 holes in one collision mesh. Technically, you can actually bypass this with a line that you can add to the QC file. But even if you do that, you end up with massive amounts of lag once you have even more than just even just a few players in the map at a time. And that's because Source Engine just wasn't designed around maps that are basically just giant models. That's not what it was designed around. Typically, you're supposed to use brushwork, right? But, you know, using the tools in this add-on and uh, some certain techniques, you can actually still make pretty optimized ma uh, model-based maps for Source Engine. Now, the split up collision mesh button will specifically split up a, mo a collision model into 32 whole increments. So, you know, let's say you had a collision model that has 64 convex holes inside of it. Well, if you split it up the, with a button here, it will split it up into two parts. You know, each part will have 32 holes, exactly. None of the parts will ever have more than 32 holes. So that keeps it within that 32 hole limit in Source Engine 
which means that you, you won't run into that massive lag that I mentioned. Now, let's move on to the next feature here. As you can see, there's a whole section dedicated to just cleanup tools, right? And you'll see the first one is a similar factor uh, in the similarity section. So basically, it, this is a setting for the button right below it, the merge adjacent similars button. And what the merge adjacent similars button does is it automatically scans all the holes in the selected collision model and it compares them to the ones next to them that are touching it. And if they have very similar volume, very similar polygon count, then it will merge them. So this is very, very handy, for example, when you're working with staircases. You know, all those steps on the staircase will have very similar volume and very similar polygon count. And so usually those end up being merged when you use this button. This is probably probably the most intense feature in the add-on. So it usually takes quite a bit of time on really complex things like this one. On again, on Nintendo 64 scenes or you know like lower or older games like that, it, it usually is still pretty fast. The similar factor basically determines how similar those holes need to be in order for them to be merged. So you know, here by default, it's set to 90% or 0.9. And that means that if the holes are 90% similar, then they will be merged or, you know, 90% or higher. In most cases, you'll probably want to leave it at the default. Now I'm going to go ahead and demo the merge adjacent similars operator. And in a bit, you'll see the end result and how it merges them together. So in this particular instance, I'm not running it on the stairs, I'm running it on the stuff around it. So you'll see the railings get merged. One, two, three. Okay, see? So now they got merged and this does reduce the polygon count quite a bit. The next feature that you see here is the remove thin holes feature. So basically, this will remove any holes in the selected collision model that are much thinner than the rest of the holes in the model. The threshold for what is considered too thin or are much thinner than the rest is this setting right above it, the thin threshold. So the thin, th thin threshold, you'll probably want to leave it at the default most of the time, but in some cases you might want to increase it, you might want to decrease it, it's up to you. All right, now I'm going to demo the remove thin holes operator for you. So first I'm gonna set the thin threshold 2.1. Keep an eye on these right here. You'll notice that these are gonna likely disappear. So just give it a sec. On a large complex model like this, it does take a bit, but on, you know, like a Nintendo 64 map, it would be pretty quick. So there we go. It actually removed over 4,000 holes. So this would probably be the operator you wanna run first after you first generate the collision model, since it really removes quite a few holes from the get-go, but of course it depends on your scene. You know, this scene has a lot of little thin parts to it, but maybe like a lower lower poly game or an older game probably wouldn't have as many thin pieces. Now the next button in the list, the force convex button, will scan every single hole in the selected collision model, and then it will make sure that it is truly convex. And so for example, if you wanted to run the decimate modifier, on your collision mesh to make it lower poly, usually that will make a lot of the holes no longer convex. And so you can always run this button after using the decimate modifier in Blender to make sure that the holes are still meeting the source engine criteria for convexity. And the next button that you see here, the remove inside holes button, it will try to find any holes that have their origin point completely inside another hole. I do want to point out though that some of these buttons don't work well with undo. So, you know, if you try to do control Z or undo the operation, I can't guarantee that every single one of these features can be undone. And so because of that, I really do recommend that you keep backup copies of your blend file before you run any of these. Now, the last button that you see here in the cleanup tool section is the cleanup collection button. This is actually the most recent feature I've added to the add-on. 
what this basically does is it cleans up the collision models collection that all of the collision models are stored in in Blender. Uh, usually, you won't need to use this very often. It's basically if you split up a collision model and you ended up with literally dozens or maybe even hundreds of different parts of the collision model, and they're all you know scattered around, and then later on you deleted them because you were making new ones or maybe you didn't need them anymore. And so now you ended up with all these empty collections in the collision models collection in Blender. And instead of having to remove them manually, I added this button so that you can automatically clean it up. That's basically just what it's for. And now finally we reached the compile tools section. So this is primarily targeted for people who have split up a collision mesh into lots of parts. That's basically what it's for. So it will automatically generate a QC file for all of the split up parts in the collision models collection in Blender. But basically whenever you generate a collision model with this add-on, it puts it in a dedicated collection just for collision models. And the generate source engine QC button that you see here will look for all of those parts in the collision models collection and then it will generate a QC file for every single one. So you don't have to manually write dozens or even hundreds of text files. It'll make them for you. You just have to make sure that you set the correct paths here. So uh, the QC folder is the path where the QC files will be saved to. That's basically what it is. And the models path is basically just the path that you see in the QC file, usually near the top. It's in the, the dollar sign model name line. And it's the path preceding the name of the model. So, you know, it's basically, you'll see the path, but don't make sure that you don't include the, the file name of the model dot MDL. Don't include that part. It's everything before that. The materials path is just the path that you use for the dollar sign CD materials line in the QC file. If you're a source engine mapper, you'll know what I mean. And then once you've set all of those settings, you just press the button. Now, what if you had a split up model that had literally hundreds of parts? Well, that's probably unlikely, but you know, let's say that you did. Well, I added a feature that will save you time from having to add all those parts manually in Hammer. And it's right here, it's the update VMF feature. All you do is specify a VMF file in the box right above it. And then you press the update VMF file. And then what it does is it will scan the VMF for any uh, parts that have not been added yet. And if they're missing, it adds them. The caveat though, is that you need to, you do still need to add part zero, like the very first part of the split up collision model. You need to add that yourself in hammer you know, as an, as a prop static or whatever, whatever it is that you're using. And the update VMF feature in this add-on will look for that first part. It will look for part zero. And then if any of the other parts above that part, you know, like part one, part two, etc., if those aren't in the VMF file, it will add them as long as, you know, they're, they're somewhere in your blend file in the collision models collection. And there's also a remove checkbox right next to it in case you actually want to remove all the parts from the VMF. You know, maybe you modified the collision mesh and you have to redo all the parts, or maybe you, you were able to reduce the amount of parts that you needed, and so now there's a bunch of parts in the VMF that you don't need anymore. Well, you can easily remove them all and start over basically by using this checkbox. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this breakdown of the features in my Blender add-on. And if you're interested in checking it out and trying it, you can find the link to the GitHub repository in the video description below. And if you're a mapper yourself, please do let me know if there's any feature you'd like me to try implementing or if there's any feedback you have for the add-on, let me know. And if you like this video and the add-on, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Thank you very much.